Hallelujah. I'm so glad, not just for myself, but for you. Because the last days of this year will be the best days for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I hear dedications. I will be dedicating a lot of things. In quick succession. As the, if there are some things that you did not plan for, they will jump to coming at you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. I will not mourn over any one of you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This month is our month of covenant security. Covenant protection. That's what we are going to have this month. Covenant protection. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many covenant people do I have here this morning? Oh my God, my God. It's not, I'm not the only one. Hallelujah. All right, let's get our Bibles open. Don't sit down yet. We are going to read together this morning. Psalms 91, we will be reading the entire chapter. At least for the benefit of those who have never read it before. Glory be to God. Psalms 91. Psalm 91. Glory to God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate in it day and night. So it should be on our mouth. Amen and amen. It should what? Be on our mouth. So we want to put the word of God on our mouth this morning. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. If you are in Psalm 91, say yes, I'm there. Yes, I'm there. All right, let's read. One to go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the soul. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. And honor him. With long life. And I hear a shout of faith this morning. My God, hallelujah. Let me tell your neighbor this morning. Say, neighbor, did you know that you just announced your testimony? Talk to another neighbor. It seems your neighbor is not believing what. Do you know that you are the one the Bible is talking about? Glory be to God. So if you know that you know that the word of God is your reality. Somebody! Hey! Hey! Glory to God! Ay, 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 ay. Glory to God! Take your seat this morning. I'll be speaking on what I've titled Dwelling in the Secret Place. Dwelling in the Secret Place. And 
Listen to me. This is going to be a, it's, it's going to be about Psalm 91. Amen. It's not going to be about Psalm 91. Next week, I, I already have the title of next week's message. It's, it's titled Unafraid. Glory be to God. Just one word. Unafraid. I am looking forward to that one, even beyond this one. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Dwelling in the secret place. Now, the text we just read now, there are arguments as to who the author of this text, of this Psalms, chapter 91 is. Some people believe that it's David that wrote it. Some other people believe that it's Moses that wrote the text. And, they, and, and, and we can lay out different arguments for the people that were claimed to be the author of that place. David was a man who understood divine protection and he enjoyed covenant security before and after he became the king in Israel. He was protected from the lion. He said to Saul, he said, the God that protected me from the lion and the bear. He said, that same God is going to make this Philistine like one of them. So he was protected not just from the bear. There was a Goliath that faced him that could not defeat him. So he understood protection. And we are tempted to say that he was the one that wrote it. Because if you read Psalm 27 verse 1 through 5, you will see how he says that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He says, when, he said, when the wicked came against me to hit me up, to hit, to hit up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and what? And they fell. Glory be to God. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. I love this fact. It's the one thing I have desired of the Lord. That I will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. So we are not wrong to say that David was the author of this psalm because in, in a way, it sounded like David. Hallelujah. And, and, and let me say this, it's not David that wrote the entire psalms from chapter 1 to chapter, what, fifth chapter, chapter 150. There are other people that authored the various psalms and it, 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 amongst them was Moses. And, and so we see David, uh, so if we look at the life of David, we think that it's something that he, he could write. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because if you look at the Psalm 27 that I just read to us, we will see how he talked about God, how he talked about dwelling in his house. And it says, He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so, if, we, if you go to Psalm 31, he referred to God as his fortress. Psalm 23, he says that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So he looks like David. But now, what about Moses? Moses was a man of spectacular encounters with God. It is recorded how that Moses spoke with God face to face like a man would be talking to his friend. Moses was a man that was in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and he, he did not eat. He was in the glory of God. Hallelujah. By the time he came down from that mountain, the people could not look at his face. Why? Because his face was beaming with the glory of God that he just came out of. Hallelujah. They, Moses understood how it is that God can preserve people. Moses understood how God can exempt people from what is generally happening. Moses was a man of various encounters when God sent him to Egypt. When God sent him to Egypt, he, was, he, he became a god unto Pharaoh. And then Moses got, to, Moses got to Egypt and then there were 10 plagues that came up and none of them affected the, 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 the Israelites. Why? So they, he understood the covenant of protection. He understood it the day that he put the blood on the lintel on the day of Passover. He saw how God can exempt his people. He saw how God can protect his people. So Moses, it's not wrong to say that Moses wrote it. Glory be to God. Because he also understood it. He understand how God's work. And now, most of the time, what we people say, what, 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 why, why we even believe that Moses was the one that wrote this text was because in Psalm 90, it was particularly stated there that he was the one that wrote that. And it just follows that if we move to Psalm 91, it was the one that wrote it. And so, whether you are saying David or you are saying Moses, you might not be wrong in any way. But really, our concern is not about the author or the human author that God used to, to write the book. Hallelujah. Both men had enough experience to write it. But guess what? I love the fact that it's the Holy Spirit that wrote the book. Somebody shout the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. is the author. 
So there is no need to debate and argue who authored a particular book, who authored a particular chapter, who authored a particular, a particular verse of the Bible because entire scripture was authored by the person of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by the word inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good works. Glory be to God. If you go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, just to tell us that the Holy Spirit authored the entire scripture, it says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but only men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This is the end of all argument. The author is not as important as the person who inspired it. Glory be to God. While knowing the author can help us get some context, but ultimately no one interprets the scripture to us like the Holy Spirit. So if we want to get the spirit of every scripture, what do we do? We pay attention to the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, Paul said that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah. The letter kills, but the spirit what? Gives life. In John 6, 63, it says that the flesh profits nothing. He says it's the spirit that gives life. We cannot enjoy the life of the world without the one that gives the light to the world. Glory be to God. And it's the Holy Spirit that will help us enjoy the life from the word of God. So we don't need to bother so much about who authored it. Amen and amen. And I said that to just help somebody who is struggling with, oh, I'm for David, I'm for Moses. No, no, no. I'm for the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout, I'm for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now to our contemplation. And, and now, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to, just going to be exegeting each of the verses as much as possible. Is that okay? Are you ready this morning? And so we see now that we have concluded about the author of it, let's just pay attention to the spirit of it for us in this season that we are. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall what? Abide under the shadow of the almighty. You know what I want to first speak? I want to first speak the word he there. The one E, 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 E is, is not about the gender. It's not about the male or the female gender. The word E is anyone. In fact, if you read it from the TPT, it says those. It says those. It says those who, those who, those who, those who dwell. Sorry, in the NLT, it says those who dwell in the secret place of the most High. So which means that there is no gender bias in this. It's all included. Which means that if you are a woman, if you are a man, you are included in this matter. You are part of the people that the Bible is speaking of, it is whosoever, it is whosoever that chooses to annex what is written here, that will enjoy what is written. Glory be to God. And you know, when I talked about, thought about the word E, for example, it just communicates how God makes things available to every one of us. How we all have equal access in our journey of life. Glory be to God. There are times when people think that some people have special access, some other people don't have those special access because he's a pastor, he's able to receive the money that he believed God for, for because he's a bishop, he's able to receive the healing because he's a, an apostle, he's, be able to pray for the, he's able to pray for the sick, and yet the God over all is rich unto all that calls upon him. So it started with he, anyone. He did not define who it was. He did not put a limit on who it can be. It can be you. Tell your neighbor it can be you. In fact, you are the one he's talking about. In Romans chapter 10 verse 13, he says, everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Many times the problem is people are not calling the name of the Lord and they are expecting salvation. There is a responsibility to enjoy what redemption has provided for you and I. There is, a, there, is a, there is something that we ought to do. There is something that is within our purview. In Mark 11 verse 23, you see how Jesus says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, it is whosoever or whoever says to this mountain. Unfortunately, the people in the body of Christ are not speaking to the mountain. They are not commanding their mountain. They are not commanding their storm. When the disciples were in the midst 
of a storm and it seemed that the storm was going to bury them together with Jesus. They came to Jesus and said, Jesus, uh, Master, care us thou not that we perish. And Jesus Christ woke up and rebuked them first before he even rebuked the wind. And he said to them, how is it that you guys don't have faith? It means that the capacity to speak to the wind was already in the disciples, but they did not do it. I came to tell somebody that the things, the promises of the, of the word of God, the things you see from the word of God are not for the selected few. They are not for the preserve of some, some people with titles. The titles is not what determines your entitlement. Glory be to God. So it is not about what you wear. It is not about the, 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 the title that you, you put on upon your life. It is about the fact that it is available for you. The Bible says of his fullness. John chapter 1 verse 16. We have all received. If it is available, we can receive it. Glory be to God. We can receive it. So he said, e, anyone. And I need that to establish that fact. That please don't remove yourself from this. When we are talking about covenant of exemption, this is not part of what we are saying. You are not exempted from the promises of the scriptures. Glory be to God. They belong to you. Somebody said they belong to me. Somebody said they belong to me. They belong to me. Glory be to God. Jesus in Matthew chapter 16 verse 19, he said to the disciples, after Peter had caught the revelation of him, he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. But unfortunately, many believers, we have the key, but we are not using the key. Amen and amen. If I give you a car key, for example, if you don't go to the car to drive it, you still, take, you still go to, to, the, to your house with your legacy Benz or a bus or by, or, or by a Uber. Why? Because you refuse to, you don't even know that the key is in your hands. Has it ever happened to you before? That you are looking for what is actually in your pocket. Even though if it repeats itself regularly, you need to eat more fish so that it can help your brain. <laughs> but you, do, do, do you realize that that happens to a lot of people? We have something in our possession and we have refused to use them. And so, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He who dwells. He who dwells. So let me take the word dwells, for example. He who dwells. The word dwells. The word dwells. The word dwells. The, to, to the, the, the word dwells is, an, is actually a very pivotal word in, that, in, in the entire chapter. Glory be to God. As I mentioned in my article about in, in, in this month, if you like, please take the, the newsletter and go and read them. It will, it will bless you. He who dwell. He who dwells. To dwell means to remain. It means to settle. It means to abide. It means to stay. It means to inhabit. It means to tarry. It means to continue. He who dwells, he who settles, he who remains, he who in a bit, he will tarry in the secret place of the Most High. Psalm 84 verse 4. It says, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be what? Praising you. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. When you dwell, you will praise. Glory be to God. That's one thing about it. But it says, he who dwells in the secret place. Of, so it is not he who visits the secret place of the Most High. It's not he who comes to the secret place of the Most High once in, a very, once in every while. It says, he who dwells. And when we say dwells, so what it means is also he who is present in the secret place of the Most High. Because there are times when you are in the secret place of the Most High and you are absent from the secret place of the Most High. 
You think you are, you, are, you are in the presence of God and you are not even conscious of the presence of whom you are and then you take your phone. Uh, during that time, you are, then, uh, you, are, you, are, you are scrolling from Facebook and checking Facebook notification. You are not present. Let me say this. Every promise, how many of us love the promise that we see in that place? Every promise embedded in this chapter is premised on this verse 1 and 2. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's premised on it. So that's why it's important for us to understand dwelling in the presence of God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They say, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will still what? Dwell. Even though I have all the resort that I have, but I will still what? Dwell. Because sometimes, resort is the reason why people don't dwell. If God does for you what you are praying for, will you still pray? You are believing God for a contract. You have been fast. You have been praying. And then to the glory of God, by a prophetic push, there was a manifestation. And you have the result that you are desiring of him. But the question is, when you wake up tomorrow morning, we used to even wake up at 4 a.m. David said, you anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Goodness and mercy is following me. I know all of the days of my life, but I have a commitment. I'm going to dwell here. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to tarry here. In fact, the word dwell also can mean I will return there. Even when I go out to do exploits, I will still keep going back. I still keep going back. God wants us planted. God wants us rooted in him. Psalm 92 verse 12. Sorry, verse 12, uh, verse 13. It says, it says, Psalm 92 verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a what? Like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in what? In Lebanon. And then verse 13 says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord, those are the ones that has a right to expect, expect flourish. Those who are what? Planted. Those who are firmly rooted. Those who are grounded in God. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Dwelling, staying is one of the things that God wants us to do in this season. Stay, dwell. Yeah. Positionally, listen to me. You and I, I in God. Amen and amen. Because your life is hid in Christ in God. You are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Far above what? Principalities and powers. You are in God positionally. But experientially are the things that you do that keeps you conscious of your position. That's why it is not time to stop praying. It is not time to stop fasting. It is not start, time to stop attending services. It is not time to stop to stop to, to stop meditating on the word of God. It is what we must continue to do. It is not time to stop giving. Glory be to God. You know how 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 sometimes that the situation of life determines whether we dwell or not. That's why it's important for us to keep standing. I've been done all to stand. He says, stand, therefore. Stay there. Dwell there. In 1 first, first Peter chapter 5, Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Devour. He says, whom you, he says, resist him, steadfast in the faith. No, you have to be steadfast. You have to be grounded. If 
First, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Somebody shout, I will dwell. Dwell, 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 dwell. In Psalm 90 verse 1, you see they, Moses, Moses saying categorically, he said, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. David, he knew the implication of being out of the presence of God in Psalm 50, Psalm 51. He says, cast me not away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Cast me not away from your presence. I can lose everything, but not your presence. I can, I can be everywhere, but I don't want to be out of your presence for a minute because I'm a cheap prey without your presence. He who dwells. Did you notice that it's a continuous tense? It is not one time. He said, that's some problem sometimes. Many times we come to, we come, we come to a place where we just, we just spend, oh, today I spent five hours with God. And then the next time you spend five hours is five months from now. One hour per month. It is not about that. It's what we do perpetually. It's our lifestyle. It's our daily work. He says, he who dwells. Where are you dwelling? In the secret place of the Most High. This dwelling thing is very important for us. It's not a touch and go experience. It is called, it's a call to come and stay. Sometimes people want to have one leg in and one leg out. One leg in the secret place and one leg in the world. It does not work like that. There is no delimiter, delimiter, demilitarized zone in this combat that we are in. If you are either in or out, you cannot be in and out. Glory be to God. That's why you see that God is big on loyalty. He does not want to be shared with anybody. Say, I am the Lord. That is my name. He said, my glory, I will not give to any other man. I don't want to share anything. I, I don't want to share you with any other God. That's why. The promise of Psalm 91 belongs to those who dwell. It belongs to those who dwell. It's not somebody, it's not, it doesn't belong to when you only experience the, the fact that when, when, when I experience a level of ecstasy and, and you know, I, and when hands were laid on me or when, the, the, when I was in service, as worship was going on, there was a goose pimple all around me. I, I just felt a cheer. Fantastic. But it is supposed to be something that you do regularly. When you feel it or when you don't feel it. That's your natural habitat. That is your place. And you see, like I said, this is pivotal in all the conversation. You see in verse 9 and 10, it says, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your what? Your dwelling place. That's why you have one result. No evil shall befall you. You see how dwelling is very important. It keeps showing up. No plague shall come near your dwelling. In fact, angelic ministry is activated in the place of dwelling. The next verse of verse 11, says, for he shall give his angels charge. The reason why no evil will befall you. No, no, any plague come near your dwelling. Is because angels will be giving charge over you. Amen and amen. And let me say this. I, I just felt like mentioning this. Sometimes, the reason why our angels are not making things available for us is because we got them busy with other things that are inappropriate. Let me say it this way. The angels are supposed to what? This is part of the assignment. No evil should befall you. Right? No plague should come near your dwelling. Right? So, if it is the assignment, they are also supposed to be ministering spirits, right? They are supposed to help you uh, 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 attract favor. They are supposed to speak to people on your behalf. 
But you see, they have expended all their energy on the things that you have no business dipping your hands into. And now they are trying to protect you from the effect of it. They are trying to ward off the evil away from you. It's part of their side. So they are, not, they, are, they are too engaged to support you to make you make fast progress. But dwelling is one of the ways you activate the ministry of angels. Angels. He will give his charge. He just charge over you to keep you in all, not some of your ways. You cannot have your dwelling in God and plagues or evil will come near your dwelling. Somebody tell my dwelling now is now in God. My dwelling is in God. My dwelling is in God. You don't get what I mean. Let's imagine this, this auditorium is the secret place of the Most High. Are you getting what I'm saying? That God is here like he is here now. You think the enemy can come in with plagues? You think the enemy can come in with evil? It won't be able to come in. It, is, it, is, it cannot penetrate. Why? Because you are made. But once you step out, it's waiting at the door. That's why you have to dwell. Even as you do your business, you must be dwelling. Even as you run after your career, you must be dwelling. Whatever you do, you must be what? Dwelling. Dwelling is staying conscious of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Staying conscious of the presence of whom that you are in. So, I, let, me, let me just move to, he said, the, the secret place of the Most High. Let me talk a little bit about the secret place. It is not a public space. It is a secret place. In my journey, I realized that God operates in secrets. Amen and amen. In Psalm 25, verse 14, it says, The secret of the Lord is with those who what? Who fear him. And he will show them his covenant. God lives in the secret. He sees in the secret. And blesses in the open. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong to him. But the ones that are revealed to us are for us and our children's children. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, that it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. It is the honor of kings to search it out. So God operates from the secret. If you want to know more about that, you see Matthew chapter 6, verse 4, when Jesus Christ was teaching about prayer, he said, the God that sees in the secret will reward you openly. What that means to us is this. The reason why you will be willing to dwell in a place is where you understand the value of that place. It's where you understand the value of the secret place. Many of us don't understand the value of the secret place. That's why we are not even desirous of dwelling there. I want us to begin to place value on a secret place. Number one is the place of his presence. Number two is the place of his power. Number three is the place of privileged information. Privileged information. Number four is the place of purpose discovery. Number five is the place of peace and prosperity. Number six is the place of procreation. There is divine injection. Divine seed is planted in your heart. Divine vision. Divine ideas are injected into your spirit man from the place of the, from the secret place. The secret place is also a place of protection. Now, I was that fast so that you can go back to the and watch it on YouTube if you want to get the whole thing. Glory be to God. He that dwells in the secret place. If you know that the secret place is so valuable, 
that you get power from the place, you enjoy his presence from the place, you enjoy privileged information from the place, you enjoy purpose discovery from the place, you enjoy peace and prosperity from the place, you enjoy procreation, you enjoy protection from the place. Then you will learn to place value on it. And some of these things that I said, I said here, it requires that we dwell in order to begin to tap into the manifestation of the things I mentioned. He says, he that dwells in the secret place. And I moved of the most high. Of the most high. Helion. You know, between verse 1 and verse 2, I realized that there were about six names that he called God. Between verse 1 and verse 2. You see, there are about six names there that he mentioned about God. You want me to tell you? He said he's the most high. Right? Helion. He said he is almighty. Somebody shout almighty. The word almighty is what we call El Shaddai. Or Shaddai. El Shaddai. The meaning of that is the multi-breasted or the big-breasted God. In the secret place of the Most High. There is so much we can enjoy. There is no nutrient that you and I need that we cannot find in Him. That, see, it is because we are in that place that we can get power. We are in that place. We can, we, we can enjoy privileged information. We, we are in that place. We can, enjoy, we can enjoy peace and prosperity. In that place, we can enjoy divine ideas. In that place, we are protected. Have you seen a mother breastfeeding a child before? What does that speak to you? Proximity. Amen. Proximity. Intimacy. That's what God wants with us. But you see, you see, he's the most high. He says, it's not just most high, he is almighty. Then he now says, I will say of the Lord, the Lord being Yahweh, the self-existent God, the eternal God, the one that has no beginning or no ending. I'm coming somewhere. And then he says, he's my God. Is that not so? But also in our personal life, he says, he is my refuge. He is my what? Refuge. Psalm 46 verse 1. Say, God is our refuge and our what? Strength. So he's a refuge. He's our refuge. He's my refuge. He personalizes. He says, he is my fortress. My defense. My protection. The guarantee that I am impregnable by the attack of the enemy. Why is it important that we notice these names that he called? It's because if you don't know him, you can't trust him. To know him is to trust him. The reason why we find it difficult to trust him is because we have little knowledge about him. It's because we have little knowledge about him. I'll get there in a minute. As I begin to wrap up. It says, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Abide under the what? Shadow of the Almighty. There's a bit of a shadow of me over there. Is that not so? You can't abide under my shadow from a distance. You have to what? Come close. You have to come close. When he says you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, the meaning of that is when you are in the, sh when, when it is very hot, when it is very hot and you get under a tree, do you feel relieved? When it is very hot and you get under a, a shadow, do you feel relieved? Do you, does it feel like heaven to you? When we choose to dwell, when we choose to abide, one thing that happens is that even though there is heat, we don't feel the effect. Go and ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
in Daniel chapter 3. The king said, I have made an image. Everyone that actually everybody should bow to this image. And this guy says, No, we are not going to bow. But anybody that does not bow, the king said they are going to be put in a furnace of fire. He said, We'll rather bow born than to bow. And then these guys, they got to the king. He said, Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The God that we serve is able to deliver us. Even if he does not, we will still not what? We will still not bow. For, he said, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. And he will deliver us. You see, those who know their God, they are strong. They are bold. So he will deliver us, O king. And then verse 17. He said, but if not, let it be known to you, O king. That is, king, there are two ways you can interpret this. King, if you decide to change your mind and say that, okay, uh, we will not make you born anymore, but just bow. We are not going to bow. They trusted in the God of Abraham. They did not have the Holy Spirit like you and I have it. But they knew that there was, if there was, there was the Almighty whose shadow that they were under that's why they were not afraid to answer the king. So when they got into the heat, when they got into the fiery furnace, the people that were taking them there died. You see, the heat that you will be able to take, the people that were even creating the heat, the people that were, unbelievers cannot take that heat because they are not under the shadow. For some of us, because of our inability to dwell, we feel the heat. We feel the heat. Keep me as the apple of your eyes. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Psalm 17 verse 8. You don't take breast milk from afar. You have to come close. Is that not so? No, I'm sorry. I'm not talking to adults. I'm talking to children now. When they want to breastfeed children, do you put the child over there and then... Psalm 24, sorry, Isaiah 24 verse, sorry, Isaiah 25 verse 4. It says, it's a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. A shade from the heat. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Verse 8. It says, for it shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its root by the river, and will not fear. Will not what? Fear when heat comes. I'll talk more about that next week when I speak on the subject of unafraid. He will not fear when it comes. Why? Because see, you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. As I wrap up, verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. So the question I'm asking you this morning, what are you saying about the Lord? What do you have to say of Him? Because what you say of Him determines what you see of Him. I will say of the Lord. The people who enjoy covenant protection, the people who enjoy covenant security are people who don't keep quiet about the Lord. They are people who are bold, who are not intimidated by what the world is saying, but they will still declare that he is God. My God. My God. My God. Somebody shout, my God. my God. The word my the word God there is Elohim. The 
creator of the hands of the earth. Now, now, so you can see where verse 3 comes from. He says, surely, you cannot know this about God and think that he will not deliver you from the snare of the fowler. There are things you know about God that keeps you confident. But you don't know him if you don't dwell. He reveals himself to people who dwell. If I walk into a room, my wife can design my presence. Why? Because of proximity. Because of what? Closeness. Because we dwell together. Glory be to God. Not because I'm wearing a perfume. People who are close to me also have an idea of my perfume. So when I step into a room, I remember in my, one of my offices then, I, when I step into the office, while I'm still downstairs, somebody that is upstairs can smell me. Say, so Pastor Dari is in, is, in, is, in, is in the office. Why? Because by reason of proximity, they could design my smell. See, there are things that you will not enjoy of God without proximity. There are things that have been prepared for us as in redemption without proximity. Our desire must be stirred up to a place where we just want to be close to him. While you are doing the exercise, you are speaking in tongues. Under your breath. While you are, do, while you are typing, and, and you know what, let me tell you something, let me quickly tell you something about speaking in tongues. It bypasses your brain. So you can be engaged in a serious work and be speaking in tongues and you are not, you are not mixing anything up. I speak in tongues when I read my Bible. Go and try it. So you will be shocked at how much download you will be receiving. Not just when you read your Bible. When you are faced with situation, when you are in your office, your spirit will be alive, you will be energized. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him, I will trust. So I'm leaving you with this question. In who or what do you trust? Psalm 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we'll trust, we'll remember the name of our God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. That is when you can say, surely He will deliver me. Because the trust is, no, is not in question anymore. Listen to me. Tell your neighbor, God can be trusted. Not trusting Him is not knowing Him. If you know Him, you will trust Him. If you know him, you will trust him. If you know him, you will trust him. So when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know that he won't leave you. Because he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. For you to be doubting whether he's going, he's going to be with you in trouble or not is because you do not know him. He says, even when you are unfaithful, I remain faithful because I cannot deny myself. He would dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide. Shall abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty. Somebody shout, I abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty. I am not in a hurry to get out. I enjoy. I dwell. I stay. I tarry. I remain in the presence of God in the secret place of the most high. Lift your hands to him. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Lord. Father, we want to dwell
We want to dwell like never before. We want your, 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 your secret place to be natural inhabitant for us. Inhabitant for us. Natural habitat for us. We want to inhabit that presence. We want to stay there. Somebody ask God to give you grace to stay. Ask God to give you grace to stay. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. If you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. You don't even have access. I want to give you access this morning so that you can be a part of those who can be in His presence, who can be in the secret place, so that this covenant protection can be yours. If you are like that this morning, you want to say yes to Jesus, you want to give your life to Jesus, can you raise up your hands? Let me pray with you. Today will be the beginning of the best days of your life. You want to give your heart to Jesus? Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Can you rise on your feet? I believe that there is one more person who needs to say this prayer. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is inviting you. Today will be the beginning of the best days of your life. Oh, yes, Lord. I said this prayer over 30 years ago. I have not regretted making this decision. He's a difference maker in my life. If you want to say yes to Jesus, you want to give your heart to Jesus, rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. There is no need to be timid. There is no need to be afraid. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. Say these words after me, my brother. Church, please help him. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for paying the ultimate price for, G for, for, for me to have life. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I realize that the price for my sin and my lawless deeds has been paid. So today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I receive you into my heart. From today, I live in the newness of life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Can we celebrate Jesus for that soul? God bless you, my brother.